Uh, hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And <clears throat> today we're gonna talk more about what dog sounds mean, and um, today we're gonna talk about growling. And growling seems kinda easy, like, yeah, dogs growl when they're mad, but there's a lot of reasons that dogs growl. And luckily, most people get nervous when they see a growling dog because growling can be a warning. Um, one of the most common reasons dogs growl is fear. And we might have seen this if you've got a scared dog that, you know, like a kid's trying to pet him. He's backed into a corner and now the dog is growling. I saw this at one of my corgi picnics. This little kid who's like 10 had this poor puppy cornered under the picnic table <laughs> and he was starting to growl and she ignored him and she just picked him up and he was miserable and couldn't wait to get away. So being afraid is one of the main reasons that dogs growl. Um, they also growl for possessiveness. I see this with this little corgi all the time because um, he was, <clears throat> Uh, I had a bad accident with the two dachshunds trying to eat him when he was very tiny and they were super aggressive with him and he was saved by my other corgi comet otherwise he would have been really wounded <laughs> so um, after that my friend gave him what he called fierceness lessons <laughs> so that he could defend himself which I don't know that that really happens but how he did this was by taking the the toys with Tristan and not really playing tug, but just sort of scrambling the toys around while they're in Tristan's mouth and growling at Tristan, which taught Tristan to growl back a little bit. It's a different kind of growl than when he's growling at another dog, but this is a possessive growl that Tristan has, like this is my toy, you can't have it kind of a growl. And it does scare people that don't know how he plays or people that are not familiar with dogs, but <clears throat> that's Tristan's uh, I see my friend Sydney joined. Sydney has seen uh, Tristan's possessive growl, and it's scary <laughs> if you don't know him. I mean, he's little, but there is that growl of like, this is my toy, you can't have it, and he likes the game of you trying to get it, um, which my friend Suzanne made even worse. So there's the growl for possession. Now, the one we're all familiar with is the growl for aggression. Um, which is the dog, like mine, like a lot of dogs, when they're in a situation when something's happening that they don't like. For instance, a big stranger at the door or another dog, or maybe your dog has been so unfortunate to see like a bear when you're walking in the woods and they growl because they are, you know, getting ready to attack. And we see this um, certainly in wild canids, particularly wolves. But this kind of aggressive growl is very different. I think it still has a huge element of fear because often when a dog is aggressive, he is afraid, for instance, of being eaten by the bear or of the big scary person at the door or the big dog down the beach that they haven't seen before. So that aggressive growl is a warning and you are smart to back off when the dog is doing an aggressive growl. Of course, before we get the aggressive growl, come here, Biss, <laughs> we get the little teeth showing, the snarky lip, the ears back, the whiskers pinned, all these signs before we get the aggressive growl. Dogs can also growl for territoriality. Um, we see this with dogs like mine, who's very possessive of his people and other people. So for instance, with the baby Corgi, who's still a puppy, when Tristan's visiting with baby Corgi's dad and he's sitting on his lap and baby Corgi comes up, Tristan gives him a growl. That's territorial growling. Um, and of course the baby Corgi being a baby and loving Tristan and doing what he says, just waits his turn and we being smart people um, take Tristan out of that situation because we don't want him to be possessive with another person um, especially when that person's dog is there and wants to be with them so territoriality can also come into play with dog to dog um, at, in your yard for instance if you have your dog on a leash your dog can be territorial about you 
um, while he's on that leash and really be guarding of that six feet of space around the two of you. This is why it's a really bad idea for dogs to greet on a leash. You should always turn them loose in a neutral place and let them work it out on their own. They will do far better than any time you're trying to introduce them on a leash because you don't really have control over them when they're on a leash. Yes, you can back up, but they can slip their collar, get out of their harness. Um, big dogs can certainly pull free from you. So um, leash, holding dogs on a leash when they're greeting uh, really brings out the growling kind of territoriality. Dogs can also growl when they're in pain. And again, I think this gets back to fear. I've seen dogs that have been really injured, you know, hit by a car or um, a whole bunch of different things, really bad cuts on their paws, things like that. And they growl because they are afraid of the pain getting worse than it already is and they're already in serious pain. Um, we can often see dogs growling too, just when they're having fun and playing together. Um, often they're two dogs that know each other well. Um, I've seen Tristan with his little pal Coco, the Cairn Terrier, they'll growl at each other or just sort of get each other to run because they love to play tag. Most herding dogs love to play chase me and they will growl at the other dog and sort of bark at them a little bit and like chase them with their nose to get them to run so that they can teach them how to play tag. Um, and Tristan does this with my mom's schnauzer, especially when she was younger, all the time because schnauzers don't play by chasing. <laughs> schnauzers play by boxing. They are quite related to boxers. They like to paw and you know Tristan being so short can get under the schnauzer and she can paw at him from above and they still do this but when they were all younger he just could not get that schnauzer to play chase me and um, so there's a lot of growling but that was a play session it was a different kind of growling than the kind of growling when dogs do not like each other so be aware when your dog is growling it doesn't always mean aggression but if it is aggression it can often be from fear um, protecting something, protecting their territory, protecting you. And there's a, a saying from The Course in Miracles, which is aggression comes from a place of fear and is a cry for help. So if your dog is growling, he is very likely fearful and he also needs your help. For instance, if you're walking and you see a bear and your dog is growling at the bear, he definitely needs your help to get you out of there because your dog will not win with a bear, neither will you. So the two of you need to get out of there um, in a safe way, obviously, you don't just turn and run. Sometimes a bear will chase you depending on the time of year, but you have to back away slowly and bring your dog with you. And I'll never forget, I ran into a bear where I used to live and I had Comet and Winnie with me, not on a leash. And the trail was literally like a tenth of a mile, just a little stroll through the woods, maybe 250 feet from my house. And I saw what looked like a shadow and then I thought it was one of the neighbors who was a heavy set guy wearing black pants. I thought he was bending over in the woods, digging up a tree or something, but it was a bear. <laughs> and my dogs were maybe eight feet ahead of me. And we were both, all three of us, maybe 30 feet from the bear. And I just called them. Thank God they came. Corgis don't always come, but they also always know when you mean it. So I was like, come on corgis. And I turned and started to walk sideways kind of briskly. And they came with me and we got them back to areas where the houses were and I could get a hold of them and pick them both up. And, you know, the bear completely was oblivious to us. Um, thank God my dogs were not growling at the bear because I know many dogs around here that have growled at a bear, surprised the bear, um, and then been in a bad situation because one swipe of a bear's paw for even a bigger dog can be fatal. So pay attention when your dog is growling. Growling can mean a lot of things. Uh, generally, it's when your dog is afraid. Your three can get loud playing and growling. Yeah, that's typical. Um, a group that live in a household like Danny's dogs often will growl when they're playing. Um, and it's sort of like almost saying it's your turn now or, um, you know, I, I'm more fierce than you. I mean, there's, there's a lot of messages in the growls when you watch your three dogs playing. And I think in your situation, Danny, to watch them playing and notice which one growls at which other one and when and why would be sort of a fascinating thing to check out. So that's a little bit of information about growling dogs. Um, we might be back on Tuesday, but definitely not Monday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. And my other phone, which has the music on it, seems to be on strike. <laughs> it worked for about 10 minutes this morning, and now it's not working again. Um, I find this typical with iPhones that over time, they don't like to keep charging. This is like the fourth one I've had that just doesn't want to charge anymore. Um, 
and I will be getting a new one in about three or four months, but I have to get a new computer first. So um, I, this one, I will, I will get them working, but it'll take a couple days. So anyway, we might see you on Tuesday. So thanks for joining us today for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Everybody have a great uh, rest of your weekend. It looks like the weather's getting a little better. It's a little warmer um, than it has been here. Ugh, I was so cold yesterday. I never warmed up. Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day.